welcome and welcome to ESG Pivot Series. Hi, Maria. Thanks for having me. Glad to see you again. And uh, just a quick introduction. I connected with Kim a few months ago because both of us work in sustainable finance education field. And I thought her career shift was really interesting because she had a long standing career at TD Bank in banking. And then she turned to sustainable finance more specifically. And so I'm happy to have her here with you to share her journey. So Kim, let's start by telling us about your uh, professional experience. So you studied, I guess, in finance, and then what was your career path before you turned to sustainable finance? Yes, yeah, so I was working at TD Bank for about 13 years before um, I decided to make the switch. So for the last about five years, I was in um, wholesale banking in um, the investment banking branch at TD Securities. And I had the wonderful experience of you know, learning all about personal finance, commercial banking, uh, corporate banking. And um, the bank also sent me to you know, London and I worked there for two years. Uh, before going back to Toronto and continue in my career there. Um, so it was a wonderful career. I loved my time at TD. I learned so much. Um, but up to a point where I wanted to grow uh, more, you know, develop myself more personally. And so that's when I decided um, to kind of reflect and make a, make a change um, to do something that, you know, fits with what I wanted to do uh, for the rest of my life. When did you do the switch? And did you know about sustainable finance before you kind of leaped into something that you didn't know yet? No, I, I just knew that I wanted to, so basically I was um, looking around and I just, I knew that I didn't want to um, work in my field until the time I retired, the time, you know, I was 30 in, in my early thirties. And um, so I took some time off to um, go to California and basically just, you know, relax for a little bit and to read a lot of books and think about what I wanted to do next. Um, and and I happened to uh, be involved in um, like uh, the um, permaculture, you know, with, with the communities there. I was volunteering there for a little bit and um, I went to a recycling center in Palo Alto and I was so mesmerized by this world I wasn't aware of because I spent my life in banking, you know, working long hours and just basically was in my little bubble over there, of, you know, consumerism. Um, so when I, when I learned about this culture, I was doing more research online and I found out that there's this, you know, like you can learn more about sustainability. You can go to school for this. Um, and that's when I came across uh, the SUMA school, the sustainability management school in Switzerland um, and various other schools too. But I reached out to this school and they were like the most enthusiastic um, about it. And back then, I didn't even like know that you could get a scholarship, you know, to do your MBA. But through my conversations with um, the school, they were able to offer me, you know, uh, like a good, um, uh, what do you call that, scholarship um, to, to, to do my MBA there. Because, of, you know, based on my work experience and um, sort of my, my enthusiasm for, for, for sustainability as a field, um, so that's how I made the switch. Like I applied, I got in, I did a bunch of tests to make sure that, you know, cause I, I'm, I'm like, an, um, I, the last time I attended school was almost 20 years ago. So, um, they just wanted to make sure that I was, you know, up to standard and everything. And, um, I was, I passed all the tests and they accepted me. I got the scholarship and, um, I got started. So from what I see is that you started in banking at TD right after graduation. You worked at TD for about 12 years? 13 years, yeah. 13 years. So, and you really moved up the corporate ladder, right? Like I see you had several positions where you started from customer service and now you went into business development and business banking, et cetera. And so, you know, at the point where you said, okay, this is not enough and I need something else. I need to refocus my life. I guess there was some kind of a reflection that you made in terms of, okay, what can I do from here? And how, how, what was your kind of a thought process of de-risking this decision? And what made you say, okay, this is it. I quit and I'm going to go explore something else. Was there like a switching point? Oh yeah, there were multiple, m multiple points uh, you know, that, um, like and multiple decisions that I had to make in order to get to the point where I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to quit and uh, do this, right? 
So let's start with um, knowing who you are. So like when I graduated, my goal was just to make a lot of money, climb the corporate ladder, you know, because that's as a young person, that's what you want. And so that's what I did. But over time, you know, as I was dealing with my colleagues and my clients, I have learned that social capital was very important to me. So one of an exa- one of um, uh, example is that um, when my colleague who's been with the bank for 30 plus years was retiring and uh, because her ranking in the bank was not high enough, she did not uh, have a, a like going away party, for example. So I throw her one, you know, using my own money. So. So over time, little things like that, I, I learned that, you know, um, having like a fair and uh, happy co-workers uh, and, you know, like um, uh, to build social capital with the people that I, I come across with every day was more important to me. Um, so that was one thing. And then another thing that I have determined was that um, like have an adventure in my life uh, is, is important, you know, so like not everyone's the same. I have colleagues who are super happy to just do the same job day in, day out, and, and that makes them so happy and that's good for them. But for me personally, I, I crave adventure. I crave the, um, uh, self-growth. I, I, I like to know, you know, so uh, where, where can I be 10 years from now? What can I learn? You know, like how can I grow as a person? So these were very strong motivators for me. It was stronger than security, but security is very important as well. You know, just because it's lower than the venture doesn't mean it's not important. So um, with, you know, with my career at the bank, you know, the, the beautiful thing about working at the bank is that you get a good income. So instead of spending that and buying expensive things, I saved that. And thankfully, Toronto at the time had a rising real estate market. It was booming. So I invested in it and I was able to be quite financially secure at the time to, you know, not require, um, a, you know, like a biweekly payment in order to survive. So um, the the decision to follow my dreams and, fo- you know, go back to school to learn about sustainable development and um, sustainable finance um, was a, a, an easier decision for me to make. And notice I didn't just turn and be like an ecologist, for example, you know, like I use my experience in finance and I just added on the sustainability part. So it was also, you know, like a less risky, like I get to pivot into a new field, but still using what I already know and and the experience I already have. Um, And then the last thing was um, sort of wrapping my head around, you know, having the confidence to do this because I, like I said, I was working at the bank for 13 years. I basically grew up in the bank. You know, most of my adult life is spent working at the bank. And um, because banking is, a, you know, is an established um, institution with very narrow job descriptions. You, you do a lot of things, but th- what you focus on is quite narrow. So over time, I felt like, you know, that's all I knew to, how to do. Like this, these specific things I was doing in the bank, which was... Um, um, correspondent banking and, and, and trade finance. Um, so I was, you know, not sure if, if I go out there, there was anything that I can actually do for real, you know? So like, just kind of, it takes some time to, um, to, to read a lot about this and um, understand that there are a lot of soft skills that we learn in our current job that are quite transferable um, and, and, and having that faith and go for it. I'll come back to that point actually later on when you talk about your current job, because I find it very interesting how, uh, you know, also working for different sides of organizations and different cultures uh, in the organizations really makes a difference. So in the banks, a huge organization, you know, you don't normally get exposed to the governance, to the risk management aspects. You work in your department, you're very focused on that, uh, you know, that stream of uh, business but you don't necessarily interact with other people. While now you're working in a smaller organization that's almost like a startup feel with a very different culture uh, focused on sustainable development. And so I'll come back to the question later because I really love to hear a little bit more of what kind of other soft skills and transferable skills have you developed in your current position? So before we get into that, maybe you could present to us Impact, the company that you currently work at. Tell us about their business model, what they do, and how did you get into that? 
Yes, yeah, so Impact is a crowdsourced platform that is based in um, Geneva, Switzerland. Um, we capitalize on public um, intelligence in order to uh, in, in, um, to analyze and inform um, investors and you know consumers such as you and I on um, how corporations are doing uh, in terms of their impact on society and on the environment. Um, so we, we have a training program, which I can go into it, um, it a little bit later, and we package the data um, and sell it to um, asset managers and made it available for free for, for anyone who's using our platform. And how big is the company? How long do you been in business and how did you get into it? Yeah, so um, Impact has been around for about three years. Um, it started by uh, uh, Bertrand Gerson and um, Sylvain Massot, who are in the investment banking space. And uh, they actually have started, um, uh, uh, the CEO um, um, Bertrand, he has started um, a green bond actually like 15 years ago. So he's, he's been in this sustainability space for a long time. Um, and so as he was working and um, he found that there wasn't enough, you know, there was a lot of ESG and CSR data, but not enough impact data. So that's why he started this company called Impact. And that was about three years ago. And how I got involved in this was by complete chance. So the school that I was going to in Switzerland, one of the investors, she goes to the same school. So she approached the school's administration to see if there's someone there who can be uh, an editor. Um, a reviewer. So when you submit your analysis, somebody has to review and approve and then publish it. So it was a part-time job kind of thing. Um, and the school recommended me because I'm, you know, I'm like one of the, the students that makes so much noise, <laughs> you know, sustainable finance and everything. So they recommended me and I interviewed uh, a few times. Um, and, and I started with them a, a part-time, just a re reviewing job. But just like any startup, you don't just do one thing, you know, and you have a and I had a lot of uh, room to be creative and to showcase um, what I want to do and then follow through and do it. So over time, I was able to pitch more things and just not because I was getting paid for it or, or whatever. It's just because I wanted to, you know, when you do something that you love, you, it's just fun, right? So um, so I just did a lot more of that. So over time, um, I started with them in March last year. And then by June, I graduated. So the founders offered me um, the um, full-time job as head uh, of uh, strategic partnerships. Um, and that's what I've been doing since. So tell me, how is your role right now? So what does head of strategic partnership do? And is it just the partnerships or do you also do other things? Well, you, I do a little bit of everything, you know, just whatever skills that you have, uh, you bring them to the table because again, you know, this is a startup and you pitch in where you can, but I have my core responsibilities. So uh, as a uh, strategic uh, partnerships person, my core responsibility is to uh, identify or other organizations that can help impact grow. And at the same time, we help that organization grow as well. So that's why early on when I reached out to you, um, you know, to, to, um, to collaborate with you with um, um, education for sustainability, um, you know, I, I offered a platform, a training, and then, you know, then I offered to, to sort of, you know, have a mutually benefit agreement with your organization to kind of help both organizations grow. Um, and and so, it's, so that's on the education space. I might be talking to a technology firm to, you know, increase our capacity. So, you, you know, we don't have to invest um, real dollar into making something when somebody already, somebody else already has it. Um, it could be that, or it could be um, a service provider. So, you know, we might have a need for various projects. So I would also reach out to them for that. I, I'm also very active in dealing with a lot of um, the sort of top five universities in various countries to um, help them incorporate our training material into um, their curriculum. And, and, and as a, you know, like um, a counter to that is the university helps promote impact as a brand. Um, and then also I'm trying to get a methodology study or, you know, case studies about us to be done at various prestigious universities. Uh, so that, that, you know, these are very exciting things. 
And then aside from that, because I came from uh, banking, I, I know a lot about um, uh, cash management payments, that kind of thing. So I also help with our, you know, paying our analysts. And um, so there, there's someone who's actually making the payment, but I kind of oversee the, the payment side of things. And um, yeah, and, you know, like I said, it's the startup, so you do everything. So when there's marketing material to be uh, released to the public, so we kind of put our heads together and give our own opinion. Um, and it's really great because the, the organization is based in Geneva and we have a lot of staff uh, that are European and I'm North American. So I come from a very different culture, you know, like the con consumer culture, like how we, how we consume news and media and everything is, you know, quite different. Um, so I was able to, you know, provide my perspective um, before things get released. So imagine you have a lot of uh, Zoom meetings, a lot of Teams meetings, right? To develop those partnerships. That's yeah. kind of how your days go. At the same time, do you still do the assessment of the impact reports? Yeah, or so I, I used to do that. So I, so um, as you know, you know, um, partnerships is almost like a sales role. So, you, you know, you send out a lot of contacts, but they don't always come in at the same time. So when I have free time, then I review. So I used to do a lot of that, but now, you know, I've been in this role for seven months now. So my, my schedule is quite full now. So I haven't reviewed in a few months, um, but you know, sometimes, uh, well, I, I am on the, um, what like a council for, let's say if someone um, as a, um, analysis gets, um, uh, some feedback and they don't agree with the feedback from our reviewer then they come back to challenge our view so then I'm on that panel that's you know we go in and we have a second look just to, to see you know to put and provide our final opinion mm -hmm. um, so it's very interesting like I'm still involved in that um, we also select um, a weekly wow award for you know the best analysis submitted that week so you know I go in and I vote on that and I, I read you know I try to read as many as possible because that's how I keep in touch with what's going on in the world, you know, what companies are doing, what are the issues at the moment. Uh, and that's very important to me. Yeah. And tell me a little bit more about the more of a darker side, the challenges maybe that you face in your role or maybe as a company that impact is facing that you need to deal with. Yeah. So like in my role, I would say the challenge is that, like I said, we, you know, it's a startup, so I do a little bit of everything. So the focus could be quite sparse, you know, like you can do, you know, 10 things at the same time, but then um, not everyone, sh you know, like everyone should have their special area. And then when they have time, they can branch out and do more things. Um, so my struggle has always been to uh, focus back into my core role. Uh, which is um, partnerships. So how I've been addressing this is that I schedule a bi-weekly meeting with my founders. And basically I tell them what I've been doing in the last two weeks. And then they would help me tweak, you know, okay, yeah, that's great. That's great. That's great. But like, can you focus more on this? Because we need to like deploy this soon. We need this to be more focused on. So then, so then that means the next two weeks I have, you know, in mind what is important and, you know, and whatever else that comes in, whatever, because, I get emails from outside proposing different things to me too. So then I assess those things and then I would, you know, ask again, you know, tell my founders what it is that I want to do. And they would say, okay, this is great. This is great. Can you focus more on this? And then, so this way, it, you know, it keeps me focused and it keeps the ball rolling on all sides. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just getting harder and harder in this world to get focused on anything, even in traditional roles, but especially in the startup world where things are changing so fast and priorities move so quickly, I could totally relate to that. Yeah. And I have a last question for you. So um, now we're talking about the educational part yes. and we do have viewers that are also considering of maybe shifting or changing or exploring the sustainable finance field. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want you to talk about the impact specifically, but also I want you to talk maybe about other programs that you came across you, that you find maybe interesting, complementary to the impact program and you yeah. would recommend. So walk us through what can a person kind of standing in front of this shift that they want to take, go and do in order to get educated and get into the field? 
Yes. Okay. So you read and rate 15 analysis, and then you have three assignments uh, where you uh, select um, a topic um, and an SDG, and you write about the impact of these companies have on society and, and the environment. And impact now has the pop, uh, the um, the topic selected tool, so you don't even have to come up with it uh, on your own. Like we we have that for you to um, to recommend to you what to write on, and you just choose one that's close to your heart. And this program is completely free. You don't have to pay anything. Once you pass that, once you've proven that you can, um, you have the skills, we even pay you 30 euro per published analysis after you're certified. So this is a way for you to dabble into the field and then even make a little bit money from it. Um, and then you can also, you know, these published analysis, you can even share on your social media, you can put it in your resume just to showcase that, you know, you have been certified, you've been proven and you, you know, you've learned how to think critically and write critically. And so I think it helps you so much in terms of creating your portfolio early on without even having to spend any money on formal schooling. Um, so back when I was uh, when I was researching for my own study, there was there wasn't so many, so that's why I had to go all the way to Switzerland, you know, to to do this de degree program. But now I know that Colombia has a, a sustainability program. Um, it's like Stanford, Yale, Cambridge, they all have it now. So the world is your oyster, basically. So if you decide that you're going to go back to school and do a full program, also make sure to ask if they have scholarships. You know, I, I it, it was something that I didn't even think about to ask. Um, but uh, because the person that I was dealing with, he was nice enough to mention, ah, oh, we have scholarships for like, um, you know, outstanding individuals. Like, you know, I don't want to say that I got it because I was outstanding. But like, you know, like if you have made some interesting career moves if you've done some interesting jobs like maybe the school will find that you're a kind of candidate that they want to be part of their um, student group right because the more successful you are the such as you can see right now that I'm talking about my school and then, then you know it creates an opportunity for other people to come to the same school um so there's so many programs right now on a platform just such as yours um you introduce them to to so many options to start so definitely start small and build from that I want to come back to the impact kind of like a structure of what you guys offer because I honestly think it's very interesting, especially because the flexibility part of it right. Yeah. I think the initial investment of time the training part maybe a few hours, the analysis takes a little bit longer but the initial one you know you do it at your time when you can. But a really cool part is that, you know, once you're certified, first of all, you get to pick your subjects and you get to pick your companies, right? Exactly. So, so you're not forced, like sometimes, you know, if you work in as an ESG analyst, sometimes you have a list of companies you have to do and a list of topics you need to evaluate. Here, yeah. it's kind of like your choice exactly. and it's according to your interest. So that's really great. Plus, you can do it part time. So you can have your full time job. And you can do this on the side when you're actually available to complete it. So that's why I really, really like your program when we actively promote it on our site as well, because I find it's a great way to put an additional experience to your CV. But the most important part is that you actually get educated, right? You discover these topics that normally you're not exposed to, waste management, pollution, social impact, all these things that we don't learn in school when you study finance all of a sudden your eyes are opening to this completely different and bigger world that we live in. So yes, and your ability to influence like the investment dollars that, that your work, you know, not only you're, be, you're, you're, you're becoming more educated in this space, not only you're earning money, not only you have the freedom to, you know, like do this part-time and move around if you want to, but you actually influence the future investment dollars of, of asset managers and governments even maybe, you know, to to move um, all these like you know dollars from brown economy to green economy. So the impact is is huge, and so that's why I like I um, working for Impact is so close to my heart because the it's very clear that what we're doing matters. You know, and what you're doing matters as a contributor. And let's say if you don't have time to um, to contribute yet or to get an uh, to to get certified yet, that's fine. You can also go in there read reading about it. Is, educating yourself, you know, and rate. Um, so not, you know, you, you don't only have to um, just just write in order to effectively contribute to the platform, but you can rate, like your rating matters because it, it tells us what your sentiment is on certain issues, you know, certain um, impact issues, certain SDGs, so that we know what, what the crowd is thinking. 
Um, and that's incredibly valuable on so many levels. Yeah. Yeah, and actually kind of brings me back to the recent uh, series of events with GameStop and uh, yeah. AMC, et cetera, where we can clearly see today that the traditional ways of evaluating a company and mm -hmm. predicting where the stock price will go is completely being put aside by this new wave or, of socially driven type of actions. Yeah. So that's another way where you know capitalizing on social cap in intelligence as impact does yeah. Really, really interesting way to kind of revolutionize um, almost the whole ESG rating and yeah. ESG. But, but GameStop is a little bit different because it's almost like um, there was an agreement of a bunch of Reddit uh, subscribers to to make, take this action. But whereas with Impact is is socially driven, but um, all our analysis are, are fact based. Like so, so everything that you read, the the analysis, it has uh, up to ten. Um, reference uh, references you know and then you can actually go and read the source so so the things that we write about are not opinions they're actually facts that has been um putting into a picture that's easy to digest easy to understand but the sources are um can be fact checked and verified just at the bottom of the analysis yeah got it and I also love the, the fact that it's democratic, you know, you don't have to, um, you know, we work for a big, big uh, firm in order to, to contribute to this, um, you know, financial decisions of the, the world, basically. And let's see, you know, with COVID, um, everyone's working from home and, um, you, you know, you, and we don't know when this will be over. We hope it will be soon. But we have contributors um, contributing from uh, Kenya, you know, we have contributors from um, Singapore, um, Switzerland, of course, you know, various places in Europe. So um, it's very democratic, it's global. And even for people, you know, like uh, since I process payments, so I know that like, people are making um, like over a thousand euro each month, you know, if they're doing this more seriously. So there's real money to be made here, and especially if you live in a country where um, the cost of living is not so high, this is something that you can actually, um, you know, like it, it can actually be a serious thing. Um, yeah. Great. The last question for you today is uh, in terms of the impact, um, where the company is going and how things are evolving, what are the things that you're looking for in the company? Uh, what will help? you know, the company succeed, maybe some of our viewers would be able to contribute. So please share with us. Thank you for asking this question. This is so important. So I would say our most important thing right now is to find um, raiders. So I would appreciate, appreciate it so much if your um, viewers can go to our website, read and rate the analysis that we have already published is low commitment, you know, it doesn't take a lot of time, maybe two minutes to read and then one minute to, to rate. But your your um, your feedback, your you know, of your sentiment on, on what we have already published is very important to us because if there isn't enough rating on a certain analysis, we will not take that into account in our um, like when we compact the data. Um, because it's, you know, let's say if, if an analysis only has two ratings, we, we're not going to be able to use that because it's not crowds, you know, it needs to be like 15 or more. So I would really appreciate it. Um, and, and I think that's like my biggest challenge right now is to promote our platform and, and, um, and have people come and read and rate the analysis that we have already published. We have about 2000 individuals signing up to contribute to write our, um, the analysis each week, you know? So uh, because we incentivize it with the 30 uh, euro payment per published analysis, rating is uh, something that we do not incentivize because we do not want to influence how you rate a company. We want it to be your own opinion, your own sentiment. So, um, so it hasn't drawn in a huge audience even though we have 15, uh, 50, 150,000 ratings already, but we need millions, you know? So, um, so my call to action is, you know, please, please, please go to our website, register, read and rate, find a topic that's close to your heart. If it's food, you can put in the search bar food. If it's cosmetic, if it's leather, if it's rainforest, you know, you can, you can search by whichever topic that you're interested in. And, you know, especially with the analysis that have lower ratings and, you know, less than 15, please, you know, spend a couple of, couple of minutes to read it, trying to understand what it is and then rate. Uh, and because your rating is so valuable to us. 
Thank you, uh, Kim. And uh, we'll include the link to the reading platform in the in the description of this video as well. Thank you. Great. It was really a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks for sharing your experience. I love hearing the stories of the shifting from the traditional type of work to completely chaotic, I would say sometimes, but yeah. so exciting field of sustainable finance. So thanks for joining yeah. us today. Thank and you. Yeah, you yeah th thank you for having me. And um, as I mentioned before, you know, just because you're in a traditional role right now, it doesn't mean that you are not able to do other things, you know, because that's was my mentality before, because whatever you're doing right now, like all those skills are so transferable. So go get it. Thanks, Kim. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.